3.0 Fall of Oria. They added Dark Pack to the game. Dark Pack was so strong. Not that strong for survive the nerf hammer. Then, in 3.17, the skill appeared in the patch notes. What's up guys, Pidget here. If I needed to describe the build, one single sentence, that would be The game thinks when we taking damage, we don't take any damage. If this doesn't make any sense to you, then you will be appreciate the explanation. This build uses a combination of unique mechanics. I will try my best to explain it to you. First, start with the skill itself, Dark Pact. We sacrificing a proportion of our life to get that much extra chaos damage. Because of that, we need high health pool and high life regen. To reach that goal, we grabbing all the life modes we can reach, so our 3 has more than 200% increased life. That's huge! I hope that's what she said. Our life regen is coming from the second mechanic. We taking Eterna Yaf Keystone. The important thing about this, our energy shield recharge is applies to our life regen. What does it even mean? The energy shield recharge is currently 33% per second of your maximum energy shield. If we don't take any damage, if we take damage, the recharge will stop. With the keystone, this number, so the 33% will apply to our life regen. So we will get 33% life regen per second. Keep in mind, even with this keystone, if we take damage, the life regen will stop. So we need to use a few things to get around this. Okay, now we have high life and regen. But how we will activate the regen itself all the time, even when we taking damage? This is when comes in the dissolution of the flesh unique jewel. With this jewel, life that would be lost by taking damage is instead reserved until you take no damage to life for two seconds. What this all that mean? When we taking any damage, technically we didn't take damage, so the life regen from the keystone will apply all the time. But this comes with a problem, and the problem is our life will get reserved when we taking damage, and we will not get the benefits from the life regen, because we technically at maximum life even if we have less health. This is when the third mechanic comes in. We using petrified blast skill gem with this or life cannot go over 50% life, but we can use the high life regen to mitigate the damage from the dark packed self damage. Even with this restriction, we still can use our whole life pool because of the javel. If we didn't use the javel, our half life would be useless and we can't abuse the high life regen. Now clear how the build itself works. We can go to play the game. But before that, please hit the like button like the shape are hitting the elder so the video can start spreading to more people. Thank you. While mapping, we have two options. First, we can use the skill itself like a melee skill so we have to stay near the monsters to do damage to them. Like in this little showcase, we casting in point blank range because the skill itself has tiny aura. Or we can use the astral projector to make our skill ranged and stay away from the danger. And we can use the skill aura effect to help or clear. It's up to your preferences, but on bosses, I'm suggest to not use the astral projector because the ring itself has no defensive stats. There are a few map mods you can't do. No life regen, desecrated ground and burning ground. The reason why you can't do this, because this build only weakness is the damage overtime effects. Any overtime effects will reserve your life so fast, so we need to avoid this type of mods on maps. We don't need to worry about the ignite, because we using purity of elements, so we cannot be ignited. We need to use flask with poison and bleed remover, but you using this anyway even if you don't play this build, so this is not a new thing for us. The defensive side we using determination and molten shell combo with cost when damage taken, purity of elements for elemental immunity, attack damage and spell block to delay the damage we take so 
we can regain the reserve life. We have over 8k life, so we can take a few big hit before we die or need to retreat. Lastly, we using Overreach to help mitigate the self damage from the Dark Pact. On the damage side, or ascendary choices, Queen of the Chaos damage, Occultist, and of course, we also stack in power charges, so our critical chance is 100% on these buses. Because of that, we using Inner Conviction to get even more damage, but we can't gain Frenzy charges. But what if I say to you, you still can get free Frenzy charges? We can craft on our amulet and rings minimum frenzy charges, so we can get even more damage and even more cost speed if the keystone says we can't gain. The beard is shines when we fighting Agnes bosses. Our signal target damage is like 14 million damage per second, so we can take down any endgame content easily. We are using the brittle ground implicit from boots, so we can easily hit the crit cap on bosses. Also, we using one of the new support gems, Divine Blessing support. So we use an extra aura in our build. But don't worry, if you don't like the more button play style, you only need cast once, because most of the bosses don't live too long. Even the 4 Breach Lord doesn't have any chance versus us, while we pumped up the quality for more loot. In this clip you can see the build survivability and the danger of too many small hits, and the life reserve in action. Also, I didn't mention we not using any life flask because we want to stay on low life all the time for the extra spell damage from the pay attunement keystone. If we die, we will die because we reserve too much of our health and that life flask will not help. When you take damage, need not to worry about your health, you can't die from your cost. Also, worth to mention, when you take damage, it will look like more scarier than it is. In this frame, you can see we still have 3.6k life, but it feels like we will die soon, at least for me. Also, when we casting, our life will start to, to bouncing, and we will think we will die because we are on low life, but in the reality, we are still on full health. This build is 100% chaos damage, so the extra energy shield mod is just a quantity increase for us. The chaos damage ignore the energy shields. Because we stacking power charges, we using void battery unique wand, this gives us an extra power charge, most more spell damage per power charge, or maximum power charge is 8, so this one will give us 200% increased spell damage, which is huge for the price. When you're looking for one, try to buy one with the highest cost speed as you can. A rare shield with spell block, increased spell damage and life and I crafted Chains to deal damage damage while focused, which is coming from the Betray mechanic when unveiling weapons or shields. Important, you need spell block on the shield, otherwise you will die from the spell hits quickly. We have a cheaper option. You can use this shield for like one chaos price. Ratif's Globe Unique Shield, which is almost the same damage as the rare version, but it has less help and cheaper than the rare one. A rare gloves with life and resistance on them. You need cause damage leached as life implicit because with this you can overreach and mitigate the damage from the dark pact. The other implicit we're looking for is chains to unwear enemies. This mod increases the spell damage taken on the enemies. Both really good implicit try to get to this combo. Basic rare boots with life movement speed and resistance on this. The really important thing on this is the implicit. Drops bitter ground while moving. Enemies on the bitter ground will have plus 5% critical chance. This is why you will see in the path of building a line under the configuration tab and inside the custom modifier page plus 5% to global critical chance. You really need this mod otherwise your damage will be much much lower. Rare amulet with life 
global critical chance multiplier, plus one to level of all chaos gems, and I crafted minimum frenzy charge on this. We are not infused for maximum power charge. Two vermilion ring with high tier life and really important on this cost speed mod. Also, you need open suffix for the minimum frenzy charge craft. You can get this type of ring with the cost speed essence, shrieking essence of zeal. I suggest to you buy this and not the higher tier essence because the higher tier essence is expensive but will not give that much damage increase for the price. On mapping we can use astral projector unique ring. But on buses we need to swap back for the extra defensive stats. A simple rear belt with life resistance and strength on this. And I crafted increased damage. We have two choices for our body armor. First, is we buying a skin of the lords with pain and keystone. We need one green, four blue and one red socket to suck at our gems. Now, the problem with this choice is maybe you don't even find this type of armor on trade, or if you find then it will be pricey. I bought mine for 60c. The other choice is we buy a simple rare chest with life and the rest of you need, like more resistance or more attributes. In the video description you will find two separate path of building with the choice you can make. Lastly, a rare helmet with DARPA cost speed enchantment, mana reservation efficiency of skill implicit and despair curse effect implicit, and the rest of the mod is life and attributes. Javels we using, starting with a simple one, replica reckless defense for spell and attack damage block. We using a watcher eye, while affected by determination you get extra chance to block attack damage and the other mod is cost speed while affected by zealotry. I bought this javel for 1x. I don't know how much will it cost when you trying to buy one. But if you find too expensive you need to decide to get the cost speed or the defensive part. I suggest to you to get the block chance version. Militant Fate Timeless Javel Important, the javel needs to be converted by High Templar Dominus, otherwise you can get the Inner Conviction node, we socketing here, and pay attention, this node needs to be not converted and this, like these two here. Lastly, the most important javel, Dissolution of the Flesh. Earlier in the video I explained why this is important for us. Try to aim for more maximum health. This time I will not tell you the passive skill tree because we have two different ones. And it would be too long so I put both path of building in the video description. One with the cheaper options and one with high budget option. I hope you enjoyed this video about Dark Pact Occultist. If you have any question, please leave under a comment under the video. Thanks for watching guys and see you in the next video.